Hey. Hey, Glenn. What's happening? Oh, it's a couple of things. It's a new year. Hey. A couple of things. It's a new year, you know. And, um, how are you doing? Bellyache. <laughs> Bellyache. Yeah. yeah. As usual. Yes. Yeah, Please. I was um, from New Year's Eve to the day before yesterday. Yeah, I was like going to um, like the whole funeral process for a friend. I, I you know, I, I was friends with this guy since I don't know seventh grade, and um, he uh, he was in. He was on the news. It was all over the news. He uh, was in the military, and they were on foot patrol in Afghanistan. Supposedly, there was like some type of meeting. It was supposed to be a meeting with the leaders, and it was. I guess it was like maybe an excuse or something. But um, a guy came in on a bike uh, with a bomb on and like killed him and uh, five other people. And they had, they it was like this big event they had for this guy. Like they shut down the the street. There's a state troopers, the the NYPD, Long Island police officers. They had helicopters. They had all these different huge things. And I don't know. I'm sitting there. You know, my point of view of the military, and I know what they're whole thing is and, you know they look at my friend they, they everybody's saying he's a hero but you know I don't know I look at him more as a victim than a hero and um yeah, but yeah well, that was that was military are made to hang up their brain with their hair <laughs> in the answer yeah and uh without hair there's not any individual thinking going on, so yeah. you you have to somewhat excuse them. <laughs> they have yeah. agreed not really to think about anything but their orders. Mm -hmm. And I guess that in a war situation, you couldn't have it any other way. Mind you, if the people who are waging the war are not, in fact, doing it for the right reasons, which would be for the benefit of the survival of your country, but are, in fact, working for a third party, uh, such as many of the people in the police and and border guards are doing now, working more for whoever directs the gene pool mixture that is required in any place in order to guide it from within by the uh, implant of sleeper cells. That's a different story. They, they should be charged with treason yeah. and the people they've directed to do that uh, also have to take some responsibility in any event I was Jenny that's another way. war I was Jenny by the way um, was she, um... well Danny told you what the cell said and that uh we put out a call on your site for assistance for Jennifer, and even though it gets uh, two, three dozen hits a day, not a single person, not a single entity has responded. So they, they've they basically told us uh, to drop out and start planning a different type of site and and give background information on what's happening. Uh, 
uh, to the the new place. But it has to be uh, uh, with ordinary people. Your sites seem to attract a group of people who are more likely to have caused the problem than want to repair it. So, at this stage of the game, I'm withholding any other comment on Jennifer, or me for that matter, but I wanted to make sure that you understood it has nothing to do with you or Danny. You both have been helpful, but your site has not. Yeah, I, I've been, like, when I last spoke to you, I was just starting to work at a job, and I worked there for two weeks, and they, they let me go because it was a job where we were basically, like, uh, environmentalists lobbyists and we would go from door to door canvassing people's houses and I didn't you know I didn't agree with the job so you know my heart wasn't in it and yeah. I didn't make enough money for them so they they let me go so and, yeah. and now I have kind of like a job where you, 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 I work as like a cameraman for a guy who makes shows for like cooking shows for the Food Network and you know it's like once in a while, like maybe like once a month they'll call me. Yeah. And we pay you like a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. So I'm I'm I don't have any money, but I will I will try to send money. I don't know. I guess. Well, I I wasn't intending this to be about you or Danny. I know your circumstances, and they're not much better than ours, or maybe even. Well, worse. hopefully this year, I, I that's one of the things I've, I'm working for, towards this year is to have a steady source of income. And you know, if I can have a steady source of income, then I, I'll be yeah. able. To, well, um, Jennifer will need the support of a legal team, and of course. You've seen my list of stuff that requires a legal team. Yeah. And until there is funding to begin the process with a leader of a legal team, I guess is what you start off with, and then that individual, male or female, starts to add to what they need. But we need a lot of letters to be sent out uh, that are preliminary to lawsuits. And uh, until that happens, uh, there's a half a billion dollars in development money for this site, the cell says is available once we make sure that that money is not going to be in a place where there are thieves uh, all around, at City Hall, at the police, at the hospital, everybody at Hydro Bell are considered to be, at this stage of the game, criminals. Some are worse, they're called hypocrites, and some are worse than hypocrites, they're called control freaks. And uh, until we clarify that we will be uh, allowed to invest in a development here on the site, um, the cell is holding back. There are apparently 50... Uh, private investors each willing to put up 10 million bucks but we gotta clean up our act so we don't end up like we did in Hull uh, with the mayor asking for a 5% cut on the project with 
federal cabinet ministers asking for a, a cut for them. Uh, and if if we can't be assured that you know people here are going to be supportive and not demanding, and certainly. One of the ways they could be supportive is to write to the Prime Minister and demand that Jennifer be brought back. She was taken out at gunpoint in the middle of the night in a place where uh, she had no option. It was uh, Ottawa Carleton Detention Center, which is classified by the cell as the worst prison in Ontario, if not in Canada as a whole. And you can imagine when somebody arrives at 1.30 in the morning and drags you out of bed with the support of the guards that are there and drags you at gunpoint to Montreal, shoved on an airplane and flown and handcuffed, removed 20 minutes before you get off the plane, and then they try to start a fight with her so that the pilot could communicate to the airport, say, I got a crazy person. Be ready to pick her up. And then getting off the plane and the police being there in droves, asking her questions to which she had all the answers and said, I think we got the wrong person for being crazy. It's more these two who brought her here that should be arrested. So until something is done, and right now it appears that the only way to go is to get a legal team behind somebody with... with um, the ability to fight the system. And one has apparently come forward. However, that would require, even if it's done pro bono, would require expenses, out-of-pocket expenses for paper and letters and all of that stuff. And... Uh, from what I understand, it will start with $10,000 to get them going. It has the support of uh, a number of uh, retired uh, officers of the court uh, who know what's going on and therefore has as good a chance of being successful as anything. So right now I got to go, Jerd, so I'll leave it for now, and we'll talk some other time when I know a little more. All right. Uh, okay. Take Bye. care of yourself. Uh, yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new year. <laughs> yeah.